So first of all, where is a good underhook? I don't think a good underhook from half guard is to be had when she sits and closes her elbow, okay? If I try that for a while, I'm gonna fail miserably. I'm gonna pay for that, right? Because I'm open and out of position. I'd say the perfect underhook from half guard is right here, right? She's not sitting on her ankles, and obviously there's all of this space. It's more space than I actually need, right? Maybe it's here, I can still harvest that, but I will not try to go for underhooks, or anything else for that matter, if it's just closed up, right? We first have to prepare this position, somehow, to then insert ourselves in there, right? Actually, Chris Paints, in his last lesson, just talked about this phenomena. I can, once I have this opening, and I'm tall, I can fill it up, right? I'm not gonna cram myself into positions where my openings are to her advantage. So, same movement, kick up, and connect your shoulder to the other person's shoulder, right? If you want to be cool, find a smaller training partner than yourself. Then you will harvest all the value out of this lesson, for once, right? My shoulder goes here, I connect, I look away, I close my scapulas, I look for the connection, my hand is low. I'm gonna show it one more time, once or twice, guys. Hmm? I'm gonna spin a little bit so everybody can see. So I'm here, kick out, shoulder in. As you see, she's not falling into me. She's a good training partner, one of these rare beasts, right? Don't be floppy, flop into me. <coughs> That's the phenomena, right? She just fell. So all of her weight is over here as a good training partner and I'm just gonna insert myself and fill out this space, right? I'm not even using the underhook now. This will be the topic of the day. Just go here. For now, everybody does like 10 of these, please. Right out. My name is Eddie. If you have any questions, I'd like to help. I know how it is to have a poor structure, right? Because I've been there, done it for decades. And what I always see in people is they collapse the shoulders to the front, like in a defensive position or something. No, I have to be confident. I have to open my chest, activate my lats, scapular retraction, make myself big, right? I'm gonna show you why. So, the next thing that we're gonna do is to balance all of the weight on our shoulder, right? Come to the front, put all of your weight onto my shoulder. Go. Maybe I go onto the elbow, on the shoulder. Okay, once I start collapsing my shoulders, she has leverage and I'm gonna collapse, obviously. Once again, once I start looking at her, I'm gonna disappear where I came from, right? I don't wanna lose progress. I wanna keep that stuff that I built. And I'm gonna do that by getting, being a hard structure. I'm gonna close my shoulder blades and I'm gonna align myself from this elbow or hand, depending on, on the reach. And here maybe I can balance, right? I'm also looking away a lot, personally, because I know once I try to use my head, I'm already losing position, right? I'm not a fan of that. So if my shoulder is in position, I can express my hand in different ways, right? The underhook is defined by the shoulder inside position. And not only that, if I show you real quick, with my elbow, push into it. Okay, I can hold that. Once she gets the leverage, this will collapse, right? What happened here is, she pushed push into me, she cut the corner, and she, out of my frame, she made a lever, and she pushed it out, right? She can do it to both sides. She can just remove the structure. So what I'm showing here with my elbow, always following this position, you see? Push into it, all of your weight. Get it always aligning. I'm gonna do it with my shoulder next. Aha. So we have a little bell here. She tries to cut the corner, and I always try to stay in front of her. If she beats me here, yeah, she can push me down. If she beats me here, ah, she can collapse me, maybe guillotine me. As long as I have my shoulder in position, it will be hard to submit it to. Get the guillotine, no reach, faster to move or something. Uh -huh. Maybe if you jump. But not just from her knees, right? As long as I have my shoulder in between, I have some defensive means. So, what we're gonna do now is, she's gonna lean all of my weight onto my shoulder, and I'm just gonna hold it, right? 
Please don't injure yourself by crumbling and relaxing. Actively push back into her. Believe in this structure, okay? Be confident. Once you feel comfortable with that, you can play this in the game that you just showed. So she tries to cut here, and I'm trying to follow her, always staying aligned, always moving a little bit, adjusting, staying inside, okay? She uses her shoulder on top of my shoulder. I'm trying to keep it by this structure, and she tries to overrun me left and right with 20% resistance. Don't go overboard because obviously you're gonna fail if you try it for the first time in your life, right? Just 20% uh, resistance, try it out if you feel comfortable, but first try just to eat all of the weight on your shoulder. Understood? Okay, try it out. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm gonna use my tight a nice OG shoulder patch thingy, and I'm gonna stab it into the collarbone, basically, okay? That's the placement. So, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, that, no it is. I find the collarbone, I'm gonna stab it in here. Like, with force actually, penetrating a little bit. Okay, that's the placement of the position. After this, I'm gonna show you real quick how to insert the arm. Close the elbow real quick. Okay, so now we actually underhook it. What I'm gonna do is I'm putting my knee behind the butt as a backstop, running it up, and I'm gonna crunch my elbow through this little gap. There's already some resistance, she's closing up the elbow, but I, I can still penetrate. One, two, three, Hap! Okay, I'm just using my core muscles. First I extend away, but then I come back with my core, opening my elbow, keeping the, the elbow in position and also the shoulder in front of her, getting the hip, pulling with my lats, closing my elbow, projection, projecting my shoulder, okay? I, I'm gonna be a space miser. I, I want to remove all the space and attach myself. So if she runs away or jumps or something, I'm gonna hitchhike off that. So she breaks my inertia. I have to really connect, okay? Really connect myself. So once again, if you already have a feeling for the position of the inside, position with the shoulder, right? Next, what you're gonna do is Walk her butt up, because if I don't have a backstop behind there, and I try to push my elbow through, I, I cannot deform her. She's going to move with me, you see? I cannot get my arm through. I'm just moving her like a centimeter or two. Not, not in my interest. This is false bleed. Once I have my knee in position and I crunch through that little gap, I can actually beat her here. Most of the times so I'm going to open my elbow, cut the corner some more, keep the shoulder in at all times, and attach myself. Right, I'm gonna show it one more time. In speed or something, okay? Once I see this position, right, I know I have a chance to insert myself into an underhook. Everybody knows how a kimura looks like, looks like a kimura. Uh, what does that look like? Question, guillotine, right? I can recognize these, these positions, but a lot of people don't have the feeling how this has to look like. I recognize this, and I tell to myself, it's a good investment for me. Getting in there, she closes the elbow, just for some extra resistance, it's realistic. I'm gonna block her butt off and crunch through here. Open, getting the underhook. If you like to play a lower underhook, I can also continue by turning my shoulder, getting super low, also using my backstop. So, if I don't wanna play the high underhook, like here, and I want to get down to her hips or even legs, I'm gonna Use my knee, rotate my shoulder, push into me. As you see, I can still manage to not collapse, right? Even when changing positions. So, shoulder position, closing elbow, getting through. And if you're cool, you can also try, while she's pushing in, change my shoulder position, and then you can play this little game with the underhook. Wanna try that? Any questions already? I'm eager to answer anything. Okay, try it out. So repeat as many as you like because it's a very specific topic today, okay? We have a very small scope of what I'm gonna show. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is the bottom position. And I'm going to show you the shell guard, this position. Okay? And then, in the last segments, we're going to try to connect these two positions. Me being with my knees in front of her, and then me getting into this wonderful under position, right? So, what you guys are going to learn now is this version of path guard where I entangle her foot, this detail. I'm going to put my knee into her hip. I'm going to spin because I guess most people are in this direction. Put my knee here, project it in. This knee is going to track this shoulder. Most of the time, so I'm going to put my hands into her triceps and wring it out like a towel. And then I'm going to project my elbows into her, one, two, three, with a crunch. Okay? Most of the times, I like to teaching structures first, grips later, right? That means if in the underhook I have a structure, I'm worrying about the hand later, since hands and feet are only to keep the things that I already have, right? It is first the structure that protects me. So if I wake up here, first I'm going to ball up, and then I'm going to take all of this position and come closer and start connecting, okay? And now I'm connected. Wherever she goes, I try to follow. Okay, oh, I'm going to follow her to the top. Yeah, run away. Something, I'm going to go up. I'm going to always start following. As you see, already her spazzing about and me staying connected open up the space for the underhook in a big way, okay? I could put my 195 in there, and if you really insert your body well into something like an underhook, you can play good, okay? It's not like just my hand, just my elbow, no, no. All the shoulder, shoulder deep, everything goes in. One more time, I'm gonna show it like three, three more times. Three more times. So, put this in, attaching to the foot, projecting my knee, I'm gonna track one, two, three, four. Because if she wants to pass me, it will either be an underhook, or a cross face, or she's gonna come closer with the hip. Oh my God, I don't want her to get closer into all of these spaces, so I'm gonna block them. I'm gonna maintain, and I'm gonna fill out these spaces with my bones, with my structures, fine? Getting in there, I have my structures, I connect, and now we play from here, okay? And we have a good training partner, move, and I'm just following her, I'm hitchhiking, I'm always going with, okay? Nothing can happen, I'm a ball here. Try it out real quick, one last time. One, two, three, four, five, mm. ringing, and then we play. Okay, if you want to be cool. This bottom position, the shell guard, is more defensive, but it keeps me super safe as long as I believe in the structures and I have everything in place, right? So the true question is, how do I get from A to B, right? So you learned that this is kind of good for me, can play from here, and you know that this is a good sign, and I can't insert myself into the underhook, right? So you have two things. The question is how to connect them. Any answers? Excellent, you have to make space. Anything else? Like that? You need something that's called kuzushi. You need to have her out of balance for just a split second, and you have to have the opening, right? You have to get her out of alignment, and the best uh, indicator for me is if I hear the hand basing. If you hear that, you know for a split second it is safe to get there, because once there's no more reverberation of the slap, right, she will come back and choke the structures. Because it's somewhat of an open um, transition, Going from here to having nothing and then having structure again, right? There might be even slower games where I just inch myself, but between A and B, right, if I can bring out of balance for just one second, it is super safe, right? So, I did not show this, guys, kicking out my own structures and then uh, being here with a shoulder out of position and my underhook choked. This might be the end of me. Instead of that, 
I'm gonna use the structure, for example, pushing, letting it fall, letting it fly, and now, once I hear that, right, I'm doing it slowly now, then I can kick myself out, sorry. And that was safe, right? I'm gonna do it fast now and fail, okay? I'm, I'm like the one black belt that likes to show it, doing it wrong sometimes, you know? So, I'm gonna do everything pretty good, and I'm too slow, and she's coming in, and that's it, I was too slow. Now I have to grind, I have to retent, stuff like that, not in my interest. So it has to be somewhat fluid in the middle, right? I'm gonna push my hips into her, I feel that she pushes back in, I'm gonna crunch under her and make a fly. She, you don't have to like lift her up all the way like I'm doing, just a little bit of elevation will suffice. Gonna put her to the ground. Once she bases, I know it is safe to kick that out and get in here. Cool? There's different ways to force this position, of course, right? I'm gonna show you one now. If you want to see more, I'd like to show you because I need something in all directions, right? I'm gonna need something to the left, I'm gonna need something to the right, I'm gonna need something into this direction. I have to be very versatile with this position in order to achieve what I want, in this case, the underhook, right? But the fanciest one, the most beautiful one, in my opinion, is lifting, pushing. I'm gonna show it without hands now. If I feel she pushes back, I'm gonna fall, disappear, make her fly, and underhook, right? Easy. To be a good training partner, push into that structure, right? I'm gonna show you maybe from the standing version. Stand up, please. Very classic. Pushing here, she pushes back, I disappear. That's a trap door. Now she's flying. Classic. Most sweeps work that way. There's a structure, she pushes into the structure, the structure disappears. Whee! She's falling, I'm moving under, this, uh, I'm appearing from the bottom, lifting up. Moving a body, getting my perfect opening for the underhook in this case, right? The more fluent you do these two positions, the transition, so these two disappear, right? One position and the other are almost identical, then you will always have success with that. Do you want to try that? I see a lot of questions. Just ask me, I'm Eddie, I'd like to help. Try. <laughs> As you saw, there has to be something between this position where I'm safe and this position where I'm safe. I have to get her out of balance and I have to open as much space as possible. If I want to play deep half guard and I'm tall, I cannot just dive in here next. Ah, this will suck. I have to open the space. Okay, once the space is open, now it's easy. Now I can play my game from here. I cannot just crunch over to the other side. I have to open. I have to open that stuff. So it looks serious, right? To get to other positions. And the thing is, I like to have my structures first, then get attachments, structures first, then attachments to stay safe, then try if, uh, let's see, if she moves, if, if she gives me some momentum to play with. If she doesn't, then I start projecting my structures, start poking her, annoying her to get some momentum back from her. Next thing I'm gonna do is to see if there is a opening, right? I will not insert myself into small holes. I need a hole of my size, right? I need a me-sized hole. If you don't have a me-sized hole, don't do it. You're gonna be crunched and collapsed. You'll be frustrated for decades, right? So I'm gonna use my shell guard to bring her off balance, bring her weight to the side so I don't get crushed. Then I'm gonna look, is there enough space? Actually, I'm gonna use it tactically. I'm gonna feel if, if the elbow is opening, if there's enough space to insert myself. And then I'm gonna attach again, right? It's very analytical, very safe. So, once I have the space, I have to create this. You can be super creative, by the way, right? I just showed you two techniques today. I showed you the shell guard and the underhook. If you find any creative way to get this position, just go for it, right? Use it. Then you can analyze again. If she runs away, I'm gonna use my hand to hitchhike. 
If she runs into me, I'm going to use my shoulder to keep safe. See? I didn't eat her weight because the shoulder was always inside. If the shoulder gets out, I'm going to put it back in. Always back in. Back in. Right? Stay safe because if it's out and she's falling into me, she might break my ribs. Everybody was here one time or the other. Not a fan. Not productive. Always keep here. So having the shoulder inside is more important than having the hand. Having my knees aligned here is more important than having a half that hook and my hands in position, right? This keeps me safe. This accidentally can also pull, right? Structures first, attach later. So that's the class. Um, let's have a photo if you like, guys.